We're just coring through the wall uh, to get to the soil and then we're going to tap con and bolt on the, uh, the jet filter. Good morning, Jay Silver, president of Helicon, and we're out here today in Hudson, Florida on one of our seawall soil stabilization projects. We were called out by the homeowner who is experiencing uh, behind this cinder block seawall uh, settlement along this walkway, as well as some settlement on the retaining wall. Um, so what we did to solidify and strengthen uh, the soil and stabilize it behind the wall is we went down uh, the wall with our SWRP1 uh, permeation grout product and we injected that um, down at the mud line and we did upward staging injecting the material uh, again from the mud line at about every foot increment up to the surface. So treating the entire section of this wall, um, spidering out and permeating up against the wall, sealing any cracks, crevices that's causing soil loss um, to wash out from the wall onto the water side. And that is what is causing the soil instability and the wall to settle as well as the retaining wall. And then now we're out here today um, installing the last phase, which is jet filters. Two critical components to protecting and maintaining a seawall. One is soil stability behind the wall. Extremely important to the structural integrity of the wall. It supports and it holds back the dead man uh, from the wall kicking out. And it also supports the structural integrity of the wall uh, so it does not shift. The second component is the pressure relief valve system. And we're using a jet filter system. You know, I wanted to speak to why that second component is so critical to the seawall. One gallon of water is seven pounds, and you have thousands of gallons of water from rain that is needs to be released um, out into the water side. And you can imagine if you have thousands of pounds of water forcing up against the wall and it has nowhere to release, it's going to push that wall and cause it to shift, which will cause cracking to the structural integrity of the wall, which is gonna allow seawater to possibly penetrate and now expose the steel of the wall, which is going to cause spalling the wall to, um, you know, we call it the domino effect. You know, once the soil stability falls, your pressure relief system falls, then you, the next domino is potential catastrophic structural damage to the wall. So a good functioning pressure relief valve system is critical to maintaining your wall. One of the features that makes the jet filter so great, this is designed by engineers, it's patented proprietary, um, is the, the filter part pops right out. So it makes this fully maintainable. So about every two years, you're gonna wanna pop out the filter, you wash that out with a water hose and pop it back in and it's good as new and it doesn't clog like a lot of weep hole or pressure relief valve systems on the market. Um, also the cone shape. So the water is constantly, the tidal pressures coming in and out. There's always water that is percolating and seeping upward into the, the weep hole and out the wall, releasing that pressure um, into the water side and retaining the wall and protecting the soil behind it. Um, as you see, it's a, a filtering fabric inside of the jet filter. Um, so that fabric is what uh, filters out uh, the water while holding back all the soil um, inside of the wall. And uh, we're getting set up here um, along the wall. These are spaced out about every eight feet. Um, and it'll probably take us approximately a couple hours uh, to complete this little uh, section of wall. Um, that we've treated and this entire project uh, from doing the soil stabilization of the soil behind the wall and also doing uh, two-part soil injections along this retaining wall that you see. Um, that took us approximately about two days and then the jet filter is the very last step and we're going to get to show you that whole entire process here shortly on this seawall. So we're going to start installing the first jet filter um, to give you an idea where it's installed, it's installed a few inches above the, uh, the barnacle line. And, um, you know, we try to install it up at the right height so that we get the maximum uh, pressure relief valve flow uh, from the water migrating and uh, weeping 
uh, through the soil out to the water side. And this is done with a uh, hydraulic drill core and all of the hydraulic fluid is all biodegradable, 100% environmentally safe. We're gonna core hole into the wall all the way through until we start hitting soil. Um, that way we know we've got the core hole far enough in so that we're gonna get the maximum amount of uh, flow and pressure relief outside of the jet filter. So here's part of uh, the core hole that we're getting through. You can kind of see we're just coring through the wall uh, to get to the soil. And then we're going to tap con and bolt on the, uh, the jet filter afterwards. One thing to uh, keep in mind for our viewers, this is a non-conformative seawall. This is one that was built with concrete block. So we're, we're unsure of right now as we're coring through it, how how far did they backfill the concrete into the wall? Uh, so we're about to find that out. But uh, normally, most walls, when you're coring through, it's about about four to six inches. In some cases, Scott, would it be longer than that on a normal wall, four to six inches, so or is that pretty the standard? Unless, not unless there's columns. Sometimes they'll put piles behind it to support it, and you don't know where that is. So sometimes yeah. you could potentially hit that batter or that batter pile or soldier pile but in most cases on the tongue groove concrete walls um yeah. they're going to be four to six four inches to six. yeah and then you're going to hit soil right away so um, right now okay. we're probably 14 inches in and we're still in concrete so we've uh cored through the wall um good news is the concrete's not poured uh you know massive foot back and uh you can see our swrp1 uh, permeation grout behind the wall so it's doing what the product's doing what it's supposed to we injected it behind the wall it spidered out protected the wall and uh, now Scott is drilled through and uh, we hit the uh, the product and soil behind it we're starting another core hole uh, getting that drilled in to the seawall till we hit soil on the other side so we can make sure the uh, the core hole completely goes through so we have that that channel to uh, channel the water through the core hole. In through the jet filter, the fabric will filter out and hold back any soil and just allow the water uh, to come through. So first we're gonna use a Tapcon screw uh, to screw into the, into the wall. Once that pilot hole has been screwed in, then we're going to use the, uh, the bolt and bolt it right into the concrete of the wall. These are the jet filler provides okay. those. And uh, these are the, um, the stainless steel uh, bolts that jet filter provides. And once that pilot hole is made, then we'll drill these on into the concrete wall. We have uh, one down, four to go. And you see the Tapcon uh, bolt stainless steel bolted to the wall and then to get out the the filter that I showed you above land just a pair of needle nose pliers you'll grab it on the ends and boom pop that out and you can flush it out and it's maintenance good as gold for another year to two years before it has to be maintenance again to quickly run through the process uh, the first step is to core hole through the cement cinder block wall uh, we cored hold through pulled out the core hole you can see the beginning of the cinder block. It was poured with concrete and then the, uh, the back half of the cinder block. So once this is removed, then we're gonna put our, our jet filter in place, uh, drill the pilot holes for the Tapcon screws to go onto the jet filter, and then these stainless steel uh, bolts are bolted into the concrete, securing the jet filter to the wall. So you're a Florida homeowner that has a seawall that's in pretty good shape and you want to ensure extending the life of that seawall and avoiding the costly replacement costs and the hassle and impact to your property in the process, click the link below or call Helicon at 813-567-1065 
and we'd be happy to come out and do a free assessment and explore all your options and find out which one is best for you and your family.